My name is Mark. Welcome to my office. You are back in school. This is a another training video. This is Antifreeze 101. Um, a lot of you um, are starting to think that live in cold climates are starting to think about winterizing your trailer. And um, for most of you, that process is part of that process is removing the water from your trailer and inserting um, what's called antifreeze into your trailer. Well, um, and you generally know that you do that so that the pipes don't freeze and break. But um, I started getting reports um, earlier this week saying that people's antifreeze wasn't as advertised. It was freezing before it should. So I started to do some tests and I found a particular brand of antifreeze. I don't know if it was specific to this bottle of this antifreeze or this brand of this antifreeze. I don't know. I didn't buy a bunch of bottles of it, but I found that this antifreeze was supposed to protect down to minus 50, but it turned solid at somewhere around zero degrees Fahrenheit. And I put a video of it up on the internet and it caused uh, a lot of confusion. Um, it turns out that a lot of people don't understand how this is supposed to work and why it works and that kind of stuff. So what I wanna do is we're gonna put up the video and show you the video that I posted of the failed antifreeze. Put it right here. Champion burst protection to minus 50 degrees. This uh, freezer of mine is just under zero degrees, and that that is the antifreeze. Hard as a rock. Hmm. Test your antifreeze, people. It's not always what it, it says it is on the bottle. I believe that this is just pink water. Okay, so that video, um, when I posted it, got all kinds of responses all over the map. And like I say, it um, demonstrated that many people are, um, they don't understand how this works and, and, and why. Um, they know that they're supposed to put it in their trailer, but they don't know what it does in there, um, that kind of business. So we're going to talk about that today. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Now I'm going to try, um, as an engineer with a chemistry background, I could take you so far into the weeds in here that you'd just be lost and this would be useless. This whole video would be useless to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some liberties and um, try to get ideas across to you that will be correct, but like a metaphor, um, it, any model, it works, but it's not technically, you know, a chemist could come in here and basically say, no, it's not that way. Well, <clears throat> I don't want to take you down the chemistry path too much. <clears throat> so at the beginning, let's start at the beginning. In the beginning, there's water, and water is in your pipes in your trailer. And water is a very, very special molecule. Um, 
it's unique. Uh, it's almost this, there's only a couple of other molecules that behave this way. When water freezes, it expands, it gets bigger. And that's unique. Most, most other liquids, when they freeze, they get, they shrink like you'd expect, but water's different. Water's unique that way. It's one of its unique properties. So let me show you what's going on in, in layman terms. Let's say that my left hand is a water molecule and my right hand is another water molecule. They can move and because of their shape, it's all about shape. You can see that they can move and they can intertwine with one another and they can interlace. And so this is how water moves when it's warm, when it's still a liquid. And you look at generally how far my thumbs are apart. My thumbs are, you know, this is one water molecule, my thumbs included, and this is another water molecule and my thumbs included. And they're moving together like this. Well, as the temperature drops in the liquid, the water molecules start slowing down and slowing down and slowing down and slowing down. And eventually they lock into place in a crystal structure. Well, look at my hands. Look at how far my thumbs are apart. They were like this, and now they're frozen like this, right? Well, that's the expansion. Here, they can interleave with one another, but when they form a crystal, they can't. So they're freezing. It's that expansion that breaks. Okay. So let's show you what that means inside your trailer. We're gonna draw a pipe. All right, so that's a, just a pipe. Maybe this goes to your, to your sink and maybe this goes to the Aldi. I don't know, this is just a pipe. And we're gonna fill it with some water. Okay, now the temperature here starts to drop. And like anything that freezes, it freezes from the outside in. So this water right here, it freezes and expands a little bit. And this water over here, it freezes and expands a little bit. Now these two edges, these two at this elbow and this elbow, they're both, they're now locked, they're frozen solid. So now this water starts to freeze also. Well, what's gonna happen to that water? It's gonna expand, isn't it? And what it's gonna do is gonna burst that pipe. It's going to either push this elbow off or split the pipe because the water that's in here needs somewhere to go. And it's blocked over here and it's blocked, blocked over here. And so when this expands, until something breaks. So that's what's going on. So antifreeze is supposed to stop that. Okay. So you now know why water breaks your pipes because when it forms a crystal structure it expands if it can't expand somewhere it'll just burst things so what is antifreeze and how does antifreeze prevent that from happening well this is a water molecule this is a water molecule and this is an alcohol molecule or a propylene glycol molecule or you know another molecule so instead of these guys um, interlocking and, and, and forming a crystal, they can move, they're still a liquid now, and then this guy forms a crystal, and this guy forms a crystal, but they can still move around each other. See that? Even though that I've got two ice crystals here, the two ice crystals haven't formed a crystal structure yet. They're individual crystals. And that's okay because, remember in our drawing, if this doesn't turn solid and can still move, right, because it has some alcohol in it or because it has um, propylene glycol in it, then when this water expands, this, these plugs can just move on up. This is still, it's not liquid anymore. It's kind of a slush. And in fact, science, um, the, there's a science to this. Um, antifreeze has what's called four phases. 
The first phase you're familiar with, a liquid. When that liquid temperature starts to drop and start to drop and drop and drop and drop, the individual water molecules will begin to freeze, but not attached to one another, but they're frozen. That's called the haze point. H-A-Z-E, haze point. The haze point is the place where the first individual ice crystals can be observed in the liquid. No problem. A water can still move. Nothing's trapped. Nothing will burst your pipe. As the temperature continues to drop, it then gets to a point where more and more and more ice crystals are shown in there until it turns into a slush. And that slush is called the cloud point. Cloud point is, it's, it's, a, it's, if you ever, if you're old enough to know about a 7-Eleven Slurpee <laughs> or um, a margarita or slushy, those, that's what it is. It's the ice crystals are all frozen solid, but they still haven't, they haven't connected together. So they haven't expanded and they're not breaking anything. They can still move in the pipe slowly, but they can still move. So as the water gets colder and colder and colder, you get to a place where it freezes solid, and that's called the freeze point. At the freeze point, even though you've got these lubricating molecules of alcohol or propylene in there, it still locks together in a grid pattern and it expands. That's what causes problems. You're okay when, you're, when your antifreeze is a liquid. You're okay when your antifreeze has reached its haze point. You're okay when the antifreeze has reached its cloud point. But the minute that it reaches its freeze point, when it becomes hard and no longer a slush, that's when it expands, that exact second. Once it's there, it expands. So if you look back at the video, you'll see that the, the antifreeze that I had in the jar actually expanded, and you'll see that. If you look at the, um, at the bowl of it, look down in it, you'll see a ring in here, and this ring is all raised up. And that's because the bowl is shaped like this from a side view. And what happened is like any, any liquid, it started freezing from the outside in, right? It started freezing this direction and started freezing this direction until the middle all froze and then this was forced up. So what you've got is you've got this donut of raised material and a lower center. That's what you actually see. So that antifreeze failed because it wasn't as advertised. Now, science will say it's liquid, haze point, cloud point, freeze point. What's advertised on the outside of these bottles, they call this freeze point. They call this the burst, the burst point, right? Burst protection. That's the term they use, burst, right? And that's because of what it does. They don't call it a freeze point because this is frozen, this is frozen, but this is what actually causes the damage. This is what bursts. So... So you've seen a video, we played that video, of some antifreeze that I found that, that wasn't what it said it was. I mean, is it just pink water or something or just a bad mix or who knows what? But I want to show you now what the cloud point actually looks like. When you get down to around zero degrees, zero degrees Fahrenheit, this should be a slush, not hard like the video showed, but an actual slush. So I'm going to go to the um, to the freezer. And I'm going to bring out in here some antifreeze, a, a different manufacturer's antifreeze that is in this cloud point place. It's not in its freeze point. It's not hard yet. It's in cloud point. So this antifreeze would do its job. So we'll be right back. OK, so real close. This, this, uh, my freezer is just, it's warming up quick, but it's just about zero degrees. 
and check this out. See that? It's slush. It won't run. See how I can still, I can scoop some of that up. See that? It's a slush. So this antifreeze, this is perfectly good antifreeze. This is zero degrees and it's not gonna burst my pipe because as we talked about, it can still move, it'll move in there. So when the center starts to, starts to freeze and expand, the outside will just move out of the way and go up the pipes, no big deal. So this is antifreeze as it's supposed to be. What you saw in that video is bad antifreeze. So what does that mean to you guys, right? Now you know that what water does, what glycol or alcohol is supposed to do in that water, um, what I'm going to recommend and what I'm recommending to, to everyone that I'm, I'm dealing with in this community um, with their trailers and stuff as they start to winterize is that take, when you buy your antifreeze, pour a little bit of it into a container and stick it in your freezer overnight. If it stays slush, you're good to go. If it turns solid, buy some different antifreeze because you're not going to get the protection that, that, that you're supposed to. Um, and you're going to have all kinds of trouble in, in the spring when you uh, find that your pipes have been burst. So in, in the last, last statement here, there are three, three kinds of antifreeze and different kinds of chemicals. Um, there is ethylene glycol. It's poisonous. Don't put that in your water system. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. There's propylene glycol. That's the good stuff. Um, propylene glycol will protect you from freezing just like any good antifreeze will. And then there's this mixture stuff where they take water, propylene glycol, and alcohol. That stuff will work. The alcohol mix stuff will work, but it's not really recommended because it has, it, the alcohol that's in it has a tendency over time to dry out the rubber components inside your water. That would be inside your water system. That would be in the rubber washers, the pump diaphragm, the O-rings, all the seals, all the check valves, all of that rubber components the alcohol sitting in contact with that rubber over the winter, over long-term exposure, will have a tendency to dry that rubber out. And you know that rubber needs to be soft to work. Um, so oh, what you want to get is you want to get a, an antifreeze that is a mixture of propylene glycol and water, not propylene glycol, water, and alcohol. Um, the propylene, propylene and alcohol stuff works, but it's got that alcohol in it and it can damage your rubber. So ideally you're looking for propylene glycol, but look for the smallest percentage of alcohol as you can get. And remember, never, ever, ever use ethylene glycol. That's the stuff that goes in your automobile engine. Don't use it. Okay. So I hope that helps. I know this is a lot longer than, than I was hoping. I'm going to try to edit it down a little bit. Um, I may do some retakes, but um, knowledge is power. Um, just knowing that you're supposed to put antifreeze into your trailer without knowing really much about why or how or what to look out for, that can leave you in a bad place. Um, it's always been my experience that the more you know about what you're doing, the better off you are. So anyway, drive safe, guys. Winterize safely and uh, see you next time.